Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley, and today we are, of course, talking about how to play the Pulp Alley Tabletop Adventure Game. Here it is. Yes, indeed. So, specifically what we're going to be talking about today is the action sequence. You can join us along here on page 37 as we talk through it a little bit. So, whether or not you're a new player or a veteran player, I think you're going to get something out of this, so be sure and hang around to the end. What we're going to talk about here is what can a character do when they activate, what happens when they activate, and how that sequence is supposed to play out. So, let's talk about it a little bit. Let's say we have old Phantom Ace here starting off in a perilous area. And for whatever reason, he's got an enemy here uh, not very far away, but he's, uh, what is it, like five or so inches He's in a perilous area, maybe it's snakes, maybe it's just a bramble area or quicksand or something like that. Who knows what it might be. Uh, he's always getting himself into trouble, but we'll say it's a perilous area. So when he activates, the first thing that happens is that you should give your opponent an opportunity to play cards. So you don't jump straight into the perilous area. You actually say, would you like to play a card before I activate? Give your, give your opponent an opportunity to do that, and that'll kind of save you later on having to go back and things like that. Like, let's say I activated them, and they wanted to play a uh, trip up on me. Well, you can't wait until after I resolve the peril and after I move and everything like that, and then go back and go, you know what? Oh, I wanted to play a trip up on you. The thing about that is, if you don't give them an opportunity to play the card, then they have a legitimate reason to ask you to go back. So it's always better to ask. So I activate Phantom Ace and I say, would you like to play a card on me? And if they decline, then I know they're not going to play a, uh, an, a, a, a card that's triggered by my activation, and then I can, I'm free to move on. That's why it's a good idea to get into that habit of always giving your opponent an, a, an option to play a card when you activate your, your character. You can avoid going back a, a lot by, by doing that. So the first thing they could say, well, you know what, I want to play a danger on you. Even though he's in a perilous area, they could still play a danger on him. That's basically double stacking the perils, but that's exact, that is a legit thing to do. Uh, so I'm throwing a, a peril here at him. And you could say a spear comes out of the jungle and, you know, at him. Okay, so he passes that. And then after the opportunity to play cards is resolved, then he's going to proceed to the uh, automatic effects, which would be the resolving the perilous area. So remember if. Remember this, boys and girls, if the danger, if he had failed the danger, then that ends his activation. And that means he does not then proceed to the perilous area. Does that make sense? If his activation ends, then it ends. So, uh, here we go again. He activates, the opponent decides, well, I'm going to play a danger on you. He, he fails this peril, and that means his activation ends. Even if he, you know, is not injured by the danger, that doesn't matter. Uh, or if he is injured by the danger, either way, if he fails the peril, then he is going to end his activation right there. And that means nothing else happens during his activation. So he does not then proceed to the automatic effects. So let's say for this example, he passes uh, the danger, and then he's going to proceed to the automatic effects. And in this case, it is the perilous area. Could be anything. So he, let's say he passes that. Now, what if the opponent was holding a trip up in his hand and then wanted to go back and play a trip up? Well, that part of the turn has already passed. The, the opportunity to play fortune effects could be played before the perilous area, and that's when they're supposed to be played. You can play multiple cards based on the same, um, 
the, the, the same trigger, which in this case is when an enemy activates. So let's say the opponent was holding a trip up and a danger. So let's, let's think about that. Let's see how that plays out. So the first thing that the opponent does is they say, well, I'm going to throw a danger on you. Okay, well, what if Phantom Ace passes that? And then they say, okay, now I'm going to put a trip up on you. And that is the better way to do that. Sometimes you'll see players just throw multiple cards down. First thing I'm going to do is put a trip up on you. Then I'm going to put a danger on you. That's not really the way that that should be done. You should play one card at a time, resolve it, and then play the other card. And that gives you that opportunity to see whether or not you even need to play it. Because if, they, if he fails the danger, then he's not going to move anyway. So you, that is a legit way to do that. You, you play the danger. You find out if that's going to stop him. And if it doesn't, then you drop the trip up on him. And, it, and, and you know, then that's going to definitely prevent him from moving over three inches. But... Let's pretend that the trip up was, uh, was not part of it for, for this example as we go forward. So he passes the danger. The next thing he has to do is try to pass the perilous area. So he passes that. And then the next thing that happens is that um, if he was engaged, then uh, a fight would just kick off immediately. That's not optional. That's not something you spend action points on or anything silly like that. It just happens automatically. If you, if you are engaged, when you activate in contact with an enemy, then a fight just starts and they're going to have to resolve a fight. If you're not engaged, then you have that option to move. So Phantom Ace could choose to move. And, you know, in this situation, maybe he moves uh, uh, actually uh, over a little bit for whatever reason, getting a, getting a good bead. Then the next thing that he could do would be attack or perform an action. From where we're at right now, I don't really have any actions to perform. Remember, actions could be things like plot points. Actions could be uh, special abilities that you have on your character and things like that. Phantom Ace doesn't really have anything cool like that. All he has is his Phantom 45s, so he chooses to blaze away with those. Now, I want to go through a few other things because I think it's worth kind of talking about some other options that could have happened in there. So, let's say, what if Phantom Ace did activate in contact with the enemy? If Phantom Base activates a contact with an enemy, the, most of the same stuff still occurs. The first thing that can happen is the, is the opponent gets to play cards. So the very first thing when I activate Phantom Ace is I say to the opponent, would you like to play any cards? And in this case, we'll say again, yes, indeed, they were holding on to a danger card. And they said, whammy, I'm going to put Phantom Ace in danger. So... Whatever it was, maybe a spear from out of the bushes or, he, you know, a snake crawling through the grass there. And he has to face this peril. Now, just like normal, if you pass a peril, your activation continues as normal. So let's go through that sequence first. If he passes the peril, then he continues his activation as normal. He's engaged with an enemy, and that means his they will have to resolve a brawl right here. Now, what would have happened if he failed the peril? Boys and girls, answer me that. What happens if Phantom Ace fails that peril? As always, what happens when you fail the peril, you're going to have to roll for the, take the hits, right? Roll a health check. Now, Regardless of whether or not I pass the health check or fail it, regardless of, of the results of, of the health check, if a character fails a peril, then their activation ends. So, if the opponent plays a danger on me and I fail to pass that peril, even if I pass the health check, 
it has become too big of a distraction. It has become, well, however you want to explain it, doesn't matter. But Phantom Ace's activation ends. And that means that you immediately end his activation and nothing else happens during his activation. It is over. That means the fight did not occur, does not occur. So uh, there are several things that will end a character's activation, and I guess the, the two big ones are if you're involved in a fight, that automatically ends your activation. If you perform an action, that automatically ends your activation. The other one would just say just you deciding, you know what, I'm going to end my character's activation. And there's plenty of times where, you know, folks will do that. Nothing at all wrong with saying, I'm going to activate my character and then choose to do nothing. There's, there, you don't have to do anything. But every ready character that's in play does have to activate. And that question comes up occasionally. You know, folks will say, you know, for whatever reason, let's just say they are facing down a big stompy mean gorilla that wants to uh, rip your face off. And folks will say, well, I'm just not going to activate then. Well, that's not the way anything works. Yeah, you don't get to avoid the big face-eating monster by choosing to, by saying, well, I'm just not going to activate. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Uh, the character has to activate. And that's twofold. One is that things can occur that you don't necessarily have planned. For example, the opponent, when you activate, can play bad stuff on you. Or face-eating monsters may want to eat your face. So you, you don't get to uh, choose not to activate. If you have any questions about this uh, sequence of events, uh, leave them down in the comments below. Let us know if there are any rules that you have questions about that you'd like to see a video about. Uh, Make sure you are a subscriber to our little channel here. Hit the like button and the bell, and we're going to see you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>